Welcome to our lecture online. As we have mentioned before, the transfer coefficient is not just a constant. There's a lot of variation due to a lot of different parameters that play a role. One big one is the difference in the temperature across the region through which we consider the convection currents. Now, if we go back to a very good text that was written a very long time ago by McAdams called McAdams Heat Transmission, he came up with a, con with a concept that the transmission coefficient depended upon the delta t to the one fourth power times a constant. Now again, that is actually a very simplified form of what it really is equal to, but it gives us kind of a good way of looking at it. The units in this case were converted to watts per square meter per centigrade degree, and that is applicable to a vertical wall under ambient air conditions. Now let's plug in some values and see what that means. When the delta T is just 1 centigrade degree, of course it would be 1.77. Remember the range that we came up with between 1 and 20, so that falls well within that range. Then when the difference in the temperature is 10 centigrade degrees, it goes up to 3.16, at 100 it goes up to 5.62, and so you can see that it's a non-linear change because of the delta T to the one fourth power. Just so that I can graph it, I also found the value for delta T equals 50 centigrade degrees. Now when we graph it, you can see the curve, you can see how that coefficient changes with the delta T across the air gap. And so there's a big difference between very small change in temperature and very large difference, not change, but differences in temperature as in, with respect to the transmission coefficient when we're dealing with convection currents under vertical wall ambient air conditions. So you can see there's a lot of different things that we should consider, but at least it gives you a, a good perspective that there can be a big difference in that coefficient depending upon the difference in the temperature, which we definitely should consider. Once the difference in temperature goes above 10, from 10 to 20, 30, 40, you can see that, yes, there is a difference, but it's not as pronounced as when the difference is very small. Of course, when the difference is very large in the delta T, then we have to consider that as well. At least that gives you one perspective on it, but that's not all. It gets more complicated, so you can see this is part one. We're going to be dealing with the next several videos that give you much more detail of how to actually calculate the transmission coefficient when we're dealing with convection currents and that is how it's done.